Good morning everybody. I'd love to be in a good mood for you this morning, but I'm not. I'm scared. I'm shaking. I've got me MOT. In nine minutes I've got to take my car in, and if it costs more than £380, I'm in trouble, because that's all I've got for them. So, fingers crossed it's not going to cost anything apart from a rear wiper, which I know I need. Um, but this is a quick fit centre and none of them have a very good reputation, so I'm, I'm thinking the worst is going to happen. But I'll try and keep positive. Let's just go and see what they say. Okay, I've had my MOT. Cost me £35 for the test. And when it was done, he says it's not good news. It's great news! Yeah, it passed it, passed it, passed it, passed it, passed it, passed. Cost me nothing. 35 quid for my test. Didn't do any work to it at all. Checked all brakes and stuff, and Mikado says, hey, my brakes are fantastic. Checked all the tyres and all of the stuff, and Mikado just laughed. Hey, you can't find out wrong with me. I'm, I'm fantastic. I'm in great shape. Um... He gave me like a warning, he says uh, you could do with replacing that tyre, it's it's barely legal. I says, well I'm barely legal, but um, I'll, I'll go along with that, you know. I don't care, I'm not, I'm not getting a new tyre until I need a new tyre. Buzzing, 35 quid, no work done, sorted. God, I'm in a good mood now, I've been worrying about that for weeks. So I've come to a church. I know I go to a lot of churches, but this one had so much exciting, interesting stuff to tell you about. St Michael's Parish in Linlithgow. Linlithgow, it's just west of Edinburgh. But, there's a funeral going on. The things I wanted to show you were inside, but there's a funeral going on, so I can't go in. Just my luck. Well, I have to say something about the church, seeing as I'm here. Um, it's where the Queen of Scots, Queen Mary of Scots, Queen of Scots, Scots Queen, Mary Queen of Scots, she was baptised here, she was born in there and she was baptised here, um, so that's pretty cool, and Oliver Cromwell and his men took over and his men, and that's why I wanted to go inside, his men took over and used this church as stables for the horses inside. And apparently on some of the pillars in there you can see like lines where they've been sharpening the, the swords on there. And there's a few musket ball holes in the walls where they've been having target practice. I just thought that had been really cool to see. And there is quite a bit of history to talk about in there. But if I can't get in, there's not to say, is there? Let's just move on. Forget it. Completely forget it. Let's go in this paidy bit. And this is from one of the grave robbing things I keep telling you about. It's a big uh, iron grate they've put over a grave to stop grave diggers, that's from 1819. And the stained glass windows in there, which each of them has an error, a purposeful error in the stained glass, but it doesn't say what it is. Uh, so I wanted to try and find out what it was, or, or if you could spot it. And apparently it's to show that nobody's perfect in life, we've all got imperfections. Looking at that one up there, I'm guessing none of the people have faces, but I might be wrong. So here we are, we're in Lingith... Lin... I can't say this place, it's doing me head in. Linlithgow Palace. I wasn't expecting to come here today. But look at the fountain in the middle. It is absolutely fantastic, and that was built by King James V, who was born here. He was born here, and Mary, Queen of Scots, was born here. So quite an important palace. I'm just reading the information board here, because I wasn't expecting to come here, so I don't know anything about it. It's from about 1424, James I built it, I think. And it says, above the entrance are angels holding scrolls and animals with masks. Can't see it, can't see it. Is anything going to go right today? Some really impressive artefacts in there, uh, including, well, there were wine bottles. Now, if my mum saw them, she said that's a wine glass. In fact, it's half of a wine glass. But the, that's wine, how wine bottles looked in the 1700s, apparently. The cutest little kid's shoe I've ever seen in my life. 
What else was there? Oh, King James the Sixth, I think it was, and his wife, some Danish woman, she looked like she had a gobstopper in her mouth. She was a bit deformed, or she was eating a gobstopper at the time of that picture. I wouldn't have married her, if that's how she looked. Um, and a few swords and things, pretty good, quite liked that. Getting lost now, to be honest with you, there's so many rooms and not any particular path to take. And the Queen herself has been here, July 1955, but can you believe they made a, a key for her so that she could get in? What's the, what, you'd think they'd have it open, wouldn't you, if the Queen were coming? You'd think they'd have the door unlocked and have someone here to meet her. Now this is the kitchen. Very high, because there's no, no floors anymore. Above, I'm sure there were a few floors. But this was the kitchen, there were the serving hatches. And this was where they did all the roasting and things. And what gets me, this is from the 1500s, yeah? Reading the sign up here, it says, the oven was principally made for baking bread. For baking bread in there, but also for pies and certain other meat dishes. How do they know what they were eating in 1500s in that particular kitchen? That's what it will have looked like. But just ignore that information. Could have been cooking anything in there. I'm guessing this is where the bread went. Or a big pizza or something in there. So this is the Great Hall. This is, it says it's one of the most impressive medieval rooms in Britain. And I can see why. It's in perfect condition. And this is from 1424 it was built. Remodelled or something in 1500 but it's massive. And look at this picture of it here. You can see how it would have looked with all the people eating. Not only did I think this was really high, it's like three or four storeys high. I've just gone down about four flights of steps to get even further below ground. This is the lower kitchen. You wouldn't want to cook down here. God, your legs would be killing you by the time you go up to the third floor. You want a lift, don't you? You know, like a lift hatch. I'm not seeing one. Unless they are. If they are, I am so clever. No, no, they're not. They're not. So this is the lower kitchen. You've got a, a well in here. Another fireplace. I'd have thought there'd be a dungeon down here, to be honest with you, but I'm not seeing one. It's lovely and cool. Very nice. Apparently this is the old entrance. Why they don't use the old entrance anymore, I don't know, but lovely bridges there, look. I'm guessing it had a moat going around it at one point. But look at that. Used to have a giant thermometer in there. Look at that. Right next to this lake, or lock. I don't know, I don't know where we are to be honest. Could be the sea for all I know. And there's uh, the church I was trying to get into, St Michael's. Then you've got the garages. Seems to be in every palace they have a garage. But not in castles, only palaces. Could fit four in here quite easily. There's a bit round the corner for cycles, mopeds. There you go. So after I'd been to the palace, I went back to the churchy bit and the funeral had finished. There were a few Klingons still in there, getting on my nerves, you know, taking up space and stuff. I couldn't talk in there. You know, people have just died and there's like sad, all sad and stuff. So I couldn't really talk. So I just took pictures. So what I'll do now is I'll show you the pictures and I'll just talk over it, yeah? So, firstly, you've got these stained glass windows. I asked the woman if he could see, if, if she knew what the imperfections were, and she didn't know. Apart from on this one, you can see it on here, right in the centre there, you've got the Scottish flag. It's not straight, and they've done that on purpose, an imperfection. I've no idea what this stone is, I just thought it looked cool. A view of the church. As I say, there were people in there, so it was a bit awkward. A uh, nice organ if you like your organs. I don't. Apparently they didn't used to have music in there. Uh, they used to sing, but you weren't allowed music. They didn't, they didn't like music. There's the musket ball holes, apparently. They look a bit big to me. And that's where they used to sharpen the stones, did Oliver Cromwell's men. That was pretty cool. I asked her about that when I went in. I says, where are they? And she showed me. I says, oh my God. And I went, whoops. 
because she were like a churchy person. Nice fonty thing if you like them as well. And a statue of Mary herself giving us all the finger to finish with. Covered in cobwebs, but very nice big bronze statue. But yeah, I enjoyed it there, we are alright. Um, a nice little village as well. On Down here you have plaques of every king and queen since Mary Queen of Scots. Going all the way down the street, that was pretty cool. So I'll just run through who's donated in the last four days. Um, I had it on a piece of paper and I've thrown the piece of paper away half an hour ago. What an idiot, what an idiot. So people who've donated, Mary Denham, Denihan, $30. Alan Rutter, £10. Alan, is it yourself who said you've got places to show me west of Edinburgh? Because if you have, I'm off there tomorrow. So, and I'm there for four days, so get in touch, please. Uh, if it isn't you, whoever it was. <laughs> Alan Rutter, £10. John Vitti, $20. Deborah Lee McCann, $10. Denise A, $20. Jeff Boone, $9.00. Devin Ray, $20. Deshriver Danny, £24 again. Liz and Mark from Manteca, California, $20. And Tommy, Deb, Matty and Guy, $50. Well done, guys. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. we just about reached 51 grand. So we just need another £47 to knock us over £51,000. So please keep the donations coming in. Right, very important news now. For my next trip, I'm not telling you what the trip is yet because I need to make sure I've got it right in my head first. But, <clears throat> this is very important. If you want to follow me on my next trip, you have to subscribe to my new channel. Now, ignore the graphics on it or any description or any words, anything I've put, it on, put on it, the little video I've put on. Ignore it all. But you have to go over and subscribe, okay? The channel name is The Travel Troll. The Travel Troll. I thought Triple D, Deep Digger Dan, Triple T, The Travel Troll. See where I'm coming from? So, I'll put a link in the description. I might be able to put something up here, not sure. Um, and please make sure you subscribe. I'm going to have to push this and push this in every video now until the end of this trip. Because after the end of this trip, I won't be posting any videos until I start my next adventure, which might be two months. So I need people to go over now and get subscribing. And I think next to where you subscribe, once you've subscribed, I think there's a little bell which you have to press. And then you get notifications every time I put a video up. So, um, please do that. Please get subscribing to the Travel Troll. And I will reveal all when I can. It probably will be after this trip now. Um, but that's it for today. Um, I'm moving on tomorrow. I wanted to go to Edinburgh, but I looked at parking. Someone invited me there to Portobello Beach, I think it's called. Um, but I looked at parking, £22 for six hours parking in Edinburgh. And I had about 12 places I wanted to see in Edinburgh, so that's a big... Mm -mm. Not happening. So I'm going straight past Edinburgh. I'm staying at the other side of Edinburgh for four nights in, in my tent. And then I'm leaving Scotland and moving to the north of England. Okay, I've got to go now. I've got a... What, what is it I'm having? A Google Hangout. I've never had a Google Hangout before. I was, I'm still not sure what one is, so I don't know how that's going to go. I'm having a Google Hangout with my, like, I don't know what you call her, my consultant -y helper off YouTube about my new channel and trying to sort this channel out and find out why Google aren't sharing my videos anymore. So I've got to go and do that. So see you later on Digging the Coast 365.